Good day to you everyone, my name is Whistler, and welcome back to another episode of my Hardcore series. It's been a little while, but I'm back. This world is back, and isn't that awesome? And I've actually updated the world since last time. I am now in 1.16.4, as opposed to 1.16.1, .1. and that means that there's now Piglin Brutes, and the Barting trade's a little bit different with the Piglins as well. Um, other than that, I think there's only a couple of bug fixes, but yeah, I'm now on a and a newer version. And the fun fact is, I updated my world to 1.16.4 and then Mo Yang released 1.16.5, which is hilarious. Like, I've, I've been this lazy in updating and now I suffer for it again. Now, one of the things I was excited to see about updating is whether my snow grass blocks have remained in the game, and yes, they have! Oh! <laughs> I remember seeing this, uh, the way of getting these removed in one of the patch notes for one of the earlier versions of 1.16 point whatevers. And I'm glad to see that I still have these really rare blocks in my game, in my world. I hope they stay. Now, I actually need a lot of black dye for today. <laughs> a lot of ink sacks. And it's going to be for a lot of black concrete and a lot of black glass. And the reason why is because today I plan on building a black hole. Yep, you heard that correctly. I am going to build a black hole today. <laughs> now Whistler, why are you building a black hole? Well, I plan on building an iron farm, and I want to have that be in the middle of the black hole. And the whole reason why I want to build a black hole is I feel like I've gotten a little bit too comfortable in my world with uh, how I am around mobs and things like that, so I thought I'd build a very non-subtle reminder that death is inevitable, you cannot escape it, like a black hole. If you get caught within a black hole's grasp, you're going to get sucked in. There's, there's no escape. So, in lieu of that, I thought I'd build a black hole to remind myself to stay safe in this world, because I, I might die at any point. Now, unfortunately, I don't have nearly enough black dye for this, so it means that I'm going to have to go on a squid killing spree. So let's go kill some squid. <laughs> Now this should be a rather easy task, I just need to throw myself out of the sea every now and then, and I should just be able to see squid spawn in, just like that, and I should be able to just come in and kill them, and I'll do this until I have around a shulker box's worth of ink sacks, and I think that should be enough for all of the black concrete and black glass that I need for this project. Oh, I think that should be enough. Oh, it's not quite a full shulker box, so I'll just kill a few more. But other than that, I think we should be done. Hooray! I've been doing this for like an hour. <laughs> right, so now the arduous task of turning all of these ink sacks into black dye. It's a very long process. <laughs> not a very long process. It's just, it's just a hassle. I wish it was just like a craft all button for times like these, where I could just turn every single ink sack in my inventory into black dye. That would just make things so much simpler. And for the black concrete, I think I need around two and a half shulkers worth. I'm going to have to craft that much for this project. Luckily, I have the resources I need. Yes, that should be enough black concrete for today. And I've still got enough black dye for the glass. And this project is one of the reasons why I built the villager block factory. And that is for glass. Like, I have now gotten absolutely tons of glass. And it means that I'm going to be able to craft up as much black glass as I like for this. I've got other projects with glass involved as well for this world. But for now, I'm just glad to have just this infinite source of glass without having to go out and destroy a desert and smelt everything up. It's just a big time saver, really, I think. Right, so I now have five and a half shulkers of black glass, which I think should be more than enough for today's project. That's the hope, anyway. <laughs> Now, the location I want this black hole iron farm to be is going to be in my spawn chunks, which is this area around here. But I think I'd like to find out where my world spawn point is, so that I can work out just where exactly I have room for the iron farm. Now, there is a couple of different ways to find the spawn chunks. One is with a compass, and one is by throwing items through the end portal in the end. And I'm going to go through both of them, just to prove that both of them work. Now, I had been meaning to find the centre of my spawn chunks for a while, because I'd quite like to, at some point, just obliterate like everything in the spawn chunks and then replace it with my own custom terrain. I think that would be a very cool project to have at some point in the distant future. But for now, I, I just need to find out where they are. <laughs> but yes, it should be just as simple as throwing a few items into this end portal. So, some of these chests, I guess. And then they'll pop out on the other side, on the world spawn point on that very block. So hopefully that works. 
let's pop through, shall we? Right, I'm through the portal, and there is the world spawn on that block there. Or one of those blocks. I think it seems to be on a point between four different blocks, which is kind of sad. I'd hoped it would just be in the middle of one block in particular. But that means that the center spawn chunk is this one here. So I should be able to go out in a wide range from here. Around, I think, is it, is it a 21 by 21 chunk radius now? I can't remember. There's always something I struggle to remember. But for now, if I turn on the hitboxes, they seem to be more on that grass block there. So I think that's going to be my world spawn. And to just confirm that, I'm going to go grab a compass. And that's going to be the second method for finding the world spawn point. But for now, just to remember, I'm just going to stick that chest there. Right, so I've grabbed my compass. Let's see where this leads us to. Right, it seems to be pointing in the same general direction. Yes, that's towards the chest. Is it the same block though? Oh. Oh. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's that's the world spawn point then, I guess. That's good to have in mind. So I guess my iron farm, I'd quite like that to be probably around five chunks away from here. And I think I should be able to see that from my base and also not have it interfere with when I come back through the end portal as well. <laughs> So for that, I'm just going to grab some cobblestone and we'll count five chunks away from the world spawn point and we'll just mark that chunk for where I want to build the black hole lion farm. Oh, yes, I can see my base from here, only just, but that should be good. So this chunk here, that's five chunks away from my base and it should still be visible from my base, which is what I want to happen because I want to have the black hole serve as a reminder. And just to compare, this is going to be four chunks. I'm going to see how easily I can see it from my base. Right, let's just park ourselves up here. Can I still see the cobblestone? Yes, I can. That's brilliant. <laughs> right, so the iron farm I have in mind for today is going to be an iron farm by Logical Geek Boy. I'll leave the farm he's designed in the description if you all would like to have a look at it. And there's actually like three iron farms in that video, and I'm going to go for the second one, which involves a pillager. And I've got to find that outpost, which is somewhere near here in a savanna and get a pillager from there. Ah, here it is. And there's a pillager already. Excellent. <laughs> so I should, uh, oh, I haven't gotten a name tag prepared. Hang on. Let me just get this done. Uh, there's the anvil. There's the name tag. Uh, what should we call this guy? Let's just call him, let's call him Bobby. I think Bobby's a good name. And yeah, there you go. Have fun with your new name, Bobby. I'm going to take you over to my spawn chunks. I hope this turns out to be a good trip and you don't die along the way. <laughs> Come with me, Bobby. Now, the reason I want to have Bobby as the first step towards creating this iron farm is because I'd quite like him to break his crossbow. And it's just going to be easier if I have him breaking that crossbow while I build the farm itself. Or while I get prepared, anyway. Because <laughs> I don't know how long that's going to take. Right, okay. I've gotten him here. So I think I'm just going to build it off to the side, this little hut that I'm going to build him in. Just going to build it out of glass as well, I think. Yeah, there we go. There's a glass shulker box. Um, right, okay. Come over here, sir. Just move towards me a little bit, please. Yes, there we go. That will be a good space, I think. Just block him in like that. Um, let's block in these walls. He's not moving because he's a ranged mob. And there we go. He's blocked in. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, let's just cover up the ceiling as well. And yeah, now I just need to create this little pen for some villagers. So I think I need around 12 of them, which means I'm going to need to drag some of the villagers over from my base and I'll just breed them up from here. And I'll shove one of them in a container with the pillager so that he can break his crossbow. And the villagers in question, it's going to be these guys in the middle of the lake. Yes! I'm finally getting rid of them. <laughs> These guys have been an eyesore on this lake for too long. For so many episodes, since the beginning of the world pretty much. And their time has come. I'm finally getting rid of it. So uh, yeah, I, I hope to just pop one of these guys into a boat. I hope this isn't too difficult to do. And we'll just take them straight over to the Mesa. Oh, yep, yeah, that was easy. Oh yes, he does like the look of that coral. Right, so I've gotten all of the villagers over, and now I need to get them into my glass box. The breeding container, I guess. Um, to do that, I'm just going to stick some beds in here. 
it's close to night time, so the theory is that they'll just walk straight in here. At least that's the hope anyway. Let's see if this works. I hope it works. Uh, this is going to be really irritating if it doesn't. <laughs> um, okay, he's stood there. These guys are pathfinding somewhere. Is, is he stuck? I think he's stuck. Why are they stuck on the crafting table? That's just... That's really weird. But these guys do seem to be going in on their own, though. So that's good. Um, yeah, they're in. Let's just block that off. And now I need to take this librarian, I think, because he's got a couple of interesting book trades. I think I'd like to keep him out of the iron farm. So I'm just going to separate him now, and we'll put him in with the pillager. <laughs> I hope he manages to stay alive. It might not happen. I don't know. Nah, but for now, let's just stick some more beds in here, and we'll start raiding these villagers. Let's just throw these potatoes in. Yes. Yes. Yes, a strange man is now throwing potatoes to you. Read now, please. Right, and now I need to get this pillager shooting at this villager. And he's hit him. That's that's not good news. Uh, but he does seem to be missing his shots from now on. That's good. And the theory is, I just leave this pillager to shoot at the villager. And I should have a broken crossbow after a certain amount of time. Oh no. Oh no, I don't, I don't want Iron Golem spawning here. Um, that's, that's not good news. Um... Naturally spawned iron golems are a threat to my world, so I'm just going to lay out some glass, make the rest of this place spawn proof, and I'll take a shot at this iron golem. I do not want these guys spawning over here. Not while I'm working, they're too dangerous. If you hit them or a villager, they'll just they'll just kill you straight up. They'll just come over to you and they'll they'll hit you once or twice or maybe three times and you're dead. That, that's as simple as that. Oh, this guy's broken his crossbow already. That was fast. <laughs> uh, I've only just finished spawn proofing this area. I've already gotten a lot of baby villagers too. And I guess it's now that I should probably start this time lapse off with building the black hole. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get straight into it. And welcome back everyone. <laughs> I now have a completed black hole and it, it, it does look like that. There is no light getting through that thing. Well, of course there isn't. It's, it's just a black hole. <laughs> I'm, I'm finding this difficult to describe. <laughs> now, um, this black hole isn't actually finished. I hope to, at some point, like get some light warping effects to go around this thing with end rods and glass. And it's going to be difficult to do, but it's something I hope to do. Because I've gotten this image in my mind of the black hole from Interstellar. It's called Gargantua, if you want to Google that for yourself. And it looks beautiful, and I just want to have that in my world. So I think it would be really cool to see. And this is a very dark area, so I just need to light up this place. Yeah. Kill that zombie. There you go. This is a, a little bit dangerous. I'm going to be keeping an eye out for creepers. And this here is going to be a water elevator for now. 
a very temporary one to get the villagers and the pillager up there. And I'm just building up to the top of the black hole with this cobblestone pillar to break a little hole into the center. And oh my goodness does it look weird. And then from here to make things easier on the removal of this thing, I'm just going to drop sand off of the side of this cobblestone pillar and that's going to be the side of the water elevator. Right, so I've got the water in, so that's that part completed. I just need to stick some soul sand at the bottom, but other than that, I think we're in. So uh, let's see what this place is like on the inside. Oh. <laughs> I can't see in there. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, um, that, that's scary, actually. Hang on, I'll go back up. Let's... Uh, What's it like with a torch? Okay, I can just see the glass. This place is spawn-proof because of the glass, luckily. I have been, I have thought that through. But oh my goodness. It's this difficult to see, and I'll put the torches here just to make the middle a little bit easier to see for me. Wow. I hadn't anticipated it being this dark. <laughs> so this is what it's like on the inside of a black hole. Just dark nothingness. But yeah, I'm gonna have to be... But yeah, I'm going to have the iron farm inside of this giant sphere. It should be easy enough to do, but it's going to be a bit hard to build. And here we go, I've pillared up a little bit. And I can't see anything, it's just my character, it's just my just my avatar. And I've turned on shaders, and it's given me this really eerie glow. But I still can't see anything unless I look down at the torches. <laughs> Right, enough of that. Let's uh, let's build this iron farm. I think the first step is to get the pillager up here. So let's just build his little container and send him up the elevator. Right, so I've created this nice little cobblestone pathway, and hopefully I can just have lead, and hopefully I can just get the villager to walk along here to the water elevator. Um, I hope it's a simple task. But yeah, let's see how this goes. Hello, sir. You are able to leave the container. Your little pen. Come on, dude. This uh. Are you stuck? Come on. Um, so you need a little bit of a helping yeah. hand. Let's stick some water there. There we go. Oh, no, he's he's still annoying. Okay, there we go. Now he's outside. Now, yeah. hopefully I should can just nudge him along to the water elevator. Let's just block him off from going back in there. And hang Oh! Oh! When did a nine golem spawn? I thought I'd spawn-proofed the place. Or I must have spawned on top of the cobblestone. Ah, oh, That's the annoying thing about villagers with beds. It's like, you get these iron golems and they're so annoying. Ah, oh, I'm gonna need to get a new pillager now. And hey, hey, I hear your name is Bobby. Come with me, sir. And that's his crossbow gone. Right, let's hope this works well this time. Let's push him into the water elevator. Oh, he's walking by himself this time, I think, a little bit. Yeah, he's just gone straight in. Okay, well, there we go. And up he goes. I, I hope he has a nice trip. Right, let's just follow this guy up. And here we go. This is the little container I'm going to have my pillager in. Right, okay, so Bobby is going to be bouncing up on top of this, uh, this little water area. And that's going to keep putting him inside of the line of sight of the villagers that I'm going to have around this little container. And this here is going to be my off switch for when I don't want the iron farm to run anymore. Because I have a suspicion that at some point I'm going to have too much iron. <laughs> but yeah, let's, uh, let's try and get the villager cells built. And it's a pretty easy to build cell. It's just going to be irritating getting the villagers up, to be honest. I'm going to build them like this. And the village is going to stand on that glowstone block there. I'm going to lock them in place with glass. Right, that's that module done. Let's just build the rest of them. I need four in total. And that's all the villager cells completed. Now I just need to build the little iron golem spawning platforms and get the villagers up here. I don't actually have enough room above the villager cells, so I'm going to have to modify this farm a little bit and have the spawning platform below the villagers. I hope that doesn't ruin anything, but I'm, that's just going to be what I have to do, because I've built the, I've built everything else too high in this black sphere. <laughs> right, let's just break that ice, and there we go, that's the Iron Golem spawning platforms completed as well. I guess now I need to actually get the villagers up here, which I think is going to be a rather annoying task to do. <laughs> I need to stop picking projects that involve villagers, they're so irritating to deal with. 
Now getting the villagers up here is going to be a rather annoying task, but I think if I just build a nice little path that I can't get off of, so I'm going to cover the sides of this with glass so that they can't walk off, and I think if I just send the villagers up the water elevator, they should just pathfind straight to the beds once it's night time. Right, okay, now I've got this very arduous task of getting them into the water elevator and they're, they're definitely putting up a fight, that's for sure. <laughs> Go that way, go towards the exit. <laughs> oh dear. This has turned out to be extremely irritating. I think I've been at this for like 45 minutes or so. And <laughs> these guys are still not in the elevator. <laughs> but I think I've got them there now. Right. Okay, there we go. Oh, they're almost in. This is the last guy. Oh, last two guys, I mean. Right, last guy now. And up he goes. And let's follow them up. It's almost night time. So these guys should be pathfinding to the beds. I think some of them already have. So I think there's only like three here. Is that is that right? I think there's three. If I'm not counting that incorrectly. So I think I need to get them out of this little water bouncy pad that they seem to be having fun in. Oh, there's four. Okay. Well. Now, this, this last guy is rather stubborn. Let's just get him out of the water elevator. There we go. Right, and hopefully everyone should just pathfind straight up to the top and into their beds. That's the hope anyway. And I think that is in fact the case. This guy, these guys have already gotten into their beds. This guy's stuck on the bed, so let's just move him over. There we go, he's in bed now too. And yeah, let's just block this area off so I don't get extra villagers over here for whatever reason. And then we should be done. Oh, I'm a villager down. I didn't make enough. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess uh, I'm, I'm just going to breed these two up here, so I'm not getting another villager up here. I, I, I can't be bothered. So this cell is just going to be two for now, but I'll breed them up later. But now that it's daytime, they've all stood up. I think everything's turned out how it should. Yeah, those guys are all in place. They ha they're not standing on the beds or anything like that, so I don't think there's any risk of them falling. So now it's time I remove the water elevator. I've already removed the water, but now I wanted to do this very satisfying destruction of the ele the of the sides itself. Let the sand fall. And I'm also going to need some lava for this project, and I need it for my killing mechanism. So this is going to be what kills the iron golems. So they're three blocks tall, so if I have them on these crimson gates, then they should die and the drops will just fall through the bottom because the drops aren't in the lava. And then I'm just going to circle this entire sphere with ice and melt it all. And that way I'm going to have water streams taking every single iron golem that spawns straight into the middle. It's going to be an interesting thing I think. Right there we go, that's the last of the ice. Just got to wait for everything to melt now. <laughs> I actually quite like how this looks. This is an interesting view. An upside down water dome. I quite like it. Right there we go. That's the iron farm complete. I just need to turn it on and build a storage system from now, which I think is pretty good going, so let's just give it a test. Let's throw an ender pearl up here. Um, what am I standing on? Uh, okay, I've I just glitched into the glass. Right, so let's give this a test. I've got the lever in front of me. Once I pull that, iron golems should spawn in every module but the one with two villages. So, let's give it a whirl. Dun 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 dun! It's time! For Iron Golems. Right. Okay, I've got two spawned over there. Uh, these two haven't spawned. Okay. Is there a reason for that? Um, maybe I'll get one soon. Right, there's one there. Okay, that's good. Uh, maybe it's just a little bit late. And I think that module there has only got two villages. So I need to breed those two up. And then I should get an Iron Golem there as well. At least that's the, that's the theory. But yeah, I now have a functional Garden Golem farm, despite the fact that these two aren't producing golems. So that's pretty good. But yeah, let's just breed these two. They were failing earlier, so I had to break the, the glass blocks above them. <laughs> but there we go, we've now got a baby. That's good. I now just have to wait for the, the baby to grow up, and then everything should be good. Now if these guys could move back into their center block, I could put the glass back, but they're not going to, are they? <laughs> Right, and this is going to be the landing pad for all of the drops. It's going to be shooting out of the bottom of the black hole, the only thing that ever escapes. And 
it's going to be a one wide water stream taking it into an item sorter. I'm going to sort the poppies and the iron and hopefully get some bone meal out of the poppies as well. Right, I need to fix that one villager module. The, the child has probably grown up and if I don't burn in the larder then that's going to be good. Uh, right, I survived that. So now I need to... Which module was it? <laughs> uh, it's the one with all of the glass, so I think it's that one there. Let's get that ender pearl, throw it up, and... Oh, right, okay. Right, and he's grown up, that's good. So, he's not in the right place, but I should be able to get him into one of the beds come night time. And there we go, I now have the item storage system functional and working. So it's just your generic item sorter, all of the items drop down into here, and yeah, that's that's good. I now have a functional iron farm, and it's quite fast as well, like I already have nine stacks. <laughs> oh, this is really fast, I wasn't anticipating a farm to be this fast with the iron. Um, I'm gonna need more storage for this, aren't I? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be very quickly overwhelmed by all of the drops produced by this thing. Well, that's a problem for future me. Now, I have a name, the final name for one of the creepers, the final creeper in the mega creeper tree, and the name is Shields Up. Thank you for that final suggestion. I just thank you everyone for all of the name suggestions for all of the creepers in this world as well. This makes 30 creepers on the tree, all with a unique name, and I'm happy about that. That's what I wanted for this place. <laughs> so yeah, let's just mark this. Let's just name tag this last creeper. Shields up, there you go. Put the glass back in, and remove the dirt to mark him as complete. And there we go. Once I remove this dirt, that should be all of the dirt removed from the tree. It's all gone. All natural from now on. <laughs> Ugh. That tree is finally finished. Well, it was already finished, but the creepers are finished. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm going to have to make that the end of the episode, though. So, thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope to see you next time. So, on that note, bye! Thanks for watching.